Okay, now there's many kinds of fractional inequalities that you can get and various ways of solving them. And in this particular example, I'm going to show you how, or well, one way anyway, of solving this kind of fractional inequality where you've got a quadratic expression on the top and a quadratic expression on the bottom and both are in their factorized state. Now one way is to work out the critical values of the top and of the bottom and critical values are where the top would equal zero, the values of x that it would equal zero and so the critical values for the top would be x equals 1 and x equals minus 2. And the critical values for the bottom would be x is minus 3 and x is 4. So we'll put that down that x equals minus 3 and x equals 4. Now what we do is construct a number line and put on these critical values. So the smallest one is going to be the minus 3. So I'll put minus 3 down here. And then we have minus 2. And then 1 and 4. So we have 1 and 4. Now I don't have to put them on a kind of scale. They don't, all I really want to create is just separate regions. So in this particular example I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 regions in between the values. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is take a value of x which is now less than minus 3. Any value you like that is less than minus 3. And I'm going to put it into this expression here and find out whether I get a plus answer or a minus answer. Now, taking any value less than minus 3 you can even invent one. Okay, let's just say we take minus 100. Okay, if I put it into this first bracket, can you see that I'd have minus 101? But clearly, this bracket would be negative. So I'd have a negative in the first bracket, putting minus 100 or any number less than minus 3 anyway into this bracket would clearly make this bracket negative. So I'd have multiplied by another negative value and this would be now divided by put a number less than minus 3 into here this bracket is negative and I'm multiplying it by this bracket so a number less than minus 3 minus another 4 still negative. Okay? And can you see that when I work this out, the top is going to be a positive value, the bottom is going to be a positive value, and positive divided by positive is positive. So this equals a positive value. A value that is greater than zero. Now I'm going to repeat this now for the interval between minus 3 and minus 2. Take any number you like between there, minus 3 and minus 2, minus 2.5 say, but whatever. Let's have a look what happens. Put that value into the first bracket. Can you see you'll get a negative answer? So we'll have that one then as negative. Put a number again between minus 3 and minus 2 into this bracket. This one would still be negative. So that would be negative. And then we're dividing by put a number between minus 3 and minus 2 in here. Now this one is going to be a positive value, so that would be positive. And then in this one, it will be negative. So what we have is minus times minus is plus, and plus times minus is minus, plus over minus is a minus number. So overall, any number between minus 3 and minus 2 is going to give us a negative number, a value that is less than 0. So what I'm going to do is keep repeating this now for each of the remaining three regions. Any number between minus 2 and 1, between 1 and 4, and between 4 and 1. 
So if I do that now, let's just see what we get. Between 1 and minus 2 then, 0 would be a good number to use. The first bracket would be negative. This one would be positive. All over positive times negative. So positive times negative. And when I do that, the top is negative, the bottom is negative, and that's going to be negative divided by negative, which is positive. Now between 1 and 4, let's say we take the number 3. First bracket, positive. Next bracket, positive. And underneath, we have positive divided by a negative number. So positive negative on the bottom is going to give negative overall. Finally, any number more than four, first bracket positive, next bracket positive, and on the bottom we have a positive number and again a positive number. Positive over positive, positive overall. So we're looking for values of x that come out make this expression come out negative, less than zero. And quite clearly, by looking at this number line here, we can see that any number between minus 3 and minus 2 is going to result in a negative answer, and any value of x between 1 and 4 is also going to result in a negative number. So, therefore, the solution to our equation will be that x is any number between minus 3 and minus 2, or x is any number between 1 and 4. Okay, so hopefully you've understood this particular way of solving a fractional inequality.